Now, two weeks since Rahul Gandhi and MK Stalin shared the stage in Delhi's Ramlila for the INDI bloc's protest and show of strength, the two leaders again shared a dais in Coimbatore, which is shaping up to be a three-way contest between the DMK, the AIA DMK, and the BJP. Now, Rahul Gandhi, in his rally yesterday, tore tore into the prime minister and claimed a storm was coming that would lead to the prime minister being ousted. A storm is going to come in India. And this Narendra Modi is going to be ejected from the government. I say Narendra Modi, but actually it is Adani government. It should be called the Adani government, not the Narendra Modi government. Because anyway, all the work is done for Adani. Whenever he wants anything, whether it is an airport, a port, highway, infrastructure, a mine, whenever he wants something, somehow the government of India just gives it to him. And it's a battle that's going to, in many ways, reflect where the BJP stands in the southern part of India. The fight for Coimbatore is high profile and high stakes. Here's a quick look at the key candidates in what is called the Manchester of South India. It's shaping up to be quite the showdown in Coimbatore, often dubbed the Manchester of the South, with three key contenders vying for the spotlight. The BJP's bet on Annamalai, Tamil Nadu's party chief, seems to be all about banking on his youth appeal and rising popularity. Times Network's Varshini managed to snag a chat with Annamalai and he delved into various issues from infrastructure development to the drug menace, even touching on Kachatibu. Listen in. Madam Coimbatore, we are bringing in a new kind of politics, uh, youth-centric, woman-centric, farmer-centric, and poor-centric. And day one, we have promised that our politics is going to be entirely different. We will not spend money. And we will trust the people, travel with them. We will assure them that we will solve all their problems in a time-bound manner. The MPs who got represented they didn't even move a paper in the parliament. So Coimbatore deserves an MP who can take it up to the central government, take it up to the cabinet, get things cleared. And Congress thinks it is above Supreme Court of India, which can come down and scrutinize every single action the investigation the agency has done. They're searching for a route which doesn't have a destination. When you have a destination, you can have a route. You don't have a destination. That is why they want to say anything and everything just to confuse voters. But people are very clear. 2024, they're going to vote for Modi with a resounding mandate. But don't count out Ganapati P. Rajkumar from the DMK camp just yet. The former Coimbatore mayor is oozing confidence, ready to lock horns with the young gun Anamalai. In a chat with Varshini, he brushed off the contentious Kachativu issue as old news and took a swipe at the BJP for sidestepping real issues like inflation. The promises we are telling for the people regarding Coimbatore constituency is speedy implementation of uh, the expansion of the Coimbatore airport. It should become an international airport. And next, speedy implementation of the metro train system. And third, the uh, railway station, actually, it is not being touched for many years. Only BJP will claim about itself, but it's not true. It's the fight between DMK and ADMK. Structure-wise, we are strong. So they don't have a say in the villages or uh, outside Coimbatore, maybe in some pockets, that's all. So what they say is they are boasting about themselves. BJP doesn't have anything to say. They don't have anything to say to the people. So divert it, they have to create some issues. For our first and prime, uh, uh, best example is the Kachatheevu. The Kachatheevu issue happened during Indira Gandhi regime. What has that to do with this at this juncture? And what about Singhai Ramachandran, the AI ADMK's pick? He is affirming that the real showdown is only between the DMK and AI ADMK, brushing aside any notion of a three-way tussle. Ramachandran is brimming with confidence for a big win. It is not a three-corner fight, it is actually a two-corner fight. Uh, they are trying to project it as a three-corner fight in social media, which is absolutely wrong. If you come to the ground, you can come along with me even tomorrow and day after when they go for the campaign on the ground. 
it is just AADMK versus DMK. So if you look at it, you have 30,000 plus 10 cross 10 room workshops with lathe workshops. That is kind of uh, uh, the lifeline of people here. So if you are hitting this side, BJP is hitting with G uh, GST on this side, DMK is uh, not supporting them with the EV bill hike, they are in uh, super trouble. One good thing happened is we are out of alliance with BJP, so we will get uh, all 46. As the stage gets set for a fierce clash in Coimbatore, tensions brewed in the city. A scuffle erupted between DMK and BJP supporters in Coimbatore, landing at least seven people in the hospital. It all started when DMK members took issue with state BJP chief K. Annamalai's purported late-night campaigning, stretching past 10 p.m. due to delays. The situation escalated quickly as members from MDMK, CPI and CPIM joined the fray, resulting in a physical altercation. In response, BJP supporters staged a late-night dharna. Now an FIR has been lodged against Annamalai and four BJP workers for breaching the model code of conduct. So where will the winds of victory blow in Coimbatore? Only time will tell. Varshini Times Network, Coimbatore.